Thank you and good evening. I was asked um, to speak for you, to you for five minutes and keep it light-hearted, but anybody who knows, um, anybody who studied in the business faculty knows that there's nothing light-hearted about business, so I'm not. Um, so Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, University faculty, graduates, and proud family and friends, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. To those graduating, my warmest congratulations. It's, it's a real honour to be sharing this special occasion with you, and particularly as I didn't attend my own graduation ceremony 30 years ago. I regret not taking a moment to stop and celebrate my achievement and realise that the completion of a degree is a first and important step in a journey to becoming a unique individual who is a step ahead of others at the same age and stage. This being a step ahead has always been important to me, possibly because I'm a scorpion and naturally competitive, but also because I was never really confident that I had any natural talent at anything. I'm not a, a natural sports person, I can't sing, and while I, I dance in a unique fashion, I'm not sure it could accurately be described as a talent. Um, I did top my class in English, economics, and typing one year at secondary school, and yes, seriously, typing was a subject back then, um, but I was not consistently better than others at anything, so I knew that if I was going to succeed, I was going to have to work hard to stay one step ahead. I want to talk to you tonight about staying ahead, differentiation, and finding the unique you. You've already taken a, a big step in the right direction. You've spent the last few years making choices, applying yourself, absorbing and learning new ideas, coping with high-pressure situations, being tested and knowing that the outcome was binary, you'd either pass or you'd fail. But this is just the start, and if you're going to thrive in what has become an increasingly competitive workplace, you need to find and keep developing your unique competitive advantage. I believe that I'm successful in business and my company is successful because I've established a differentiated position. Our clients know what makes us different than other money managers and KiwiSaver providers and they choose us because of that differentiation. I've seen would-be competitors try to build successful businesses, but they failed because they were the same as every other player and had nothing unique to attract clients. I didn't have a unique talent or competitive advantage when I completed my degree, despite the best efforts of the faculty here at Victoria. I started my degree thinking I was a great economist in the making, um, but I soon discovered otherwise. I then focused on accounting and marketing, and while I was not brilliant at either, I managed to graduate with a good enough degree that when I wrote to all the share brokers in Wellington looking for a job, any job, uh, one of them granted me an interview and offered me the role of advisor's assistant, which was basically at the bottom of the pecking order. I was told years later that my degree got me an interview, but it was my enthusiasm and confidence that got me the job. I entered the workforce with abundant enthusiasm and a great work ethic, which I think came from my parents and that innate competitiveness that I talked about earlier. It led me to work all the hours under the sun and try to prove to my superiors that I had been a good hire. To this day, I believe that these qualities and values are just as important and in many ways more important than any theory that I learnt at school or university, and I mean, don't, I mean no disrespect to the academic um, faculty in, in the room. When you think about it, the person sitting next to you is just as capable of learning and applying the theories that you've learnt. So you're in pole position when it comes to finding a job. You'll both be graduates with good degrees from a very good university. In today's crowded and competitive market, whether you or your fellow graduate gets employed will be less about your grades and more about something else that differentiates you from him or her. It could be your manner, your confidence, your eloquence, your personal interests, your achievements outside university that demonstrate leadership or, or teamwork or creativity or any other characteristic that your employer might be interested in. In getting this far, the road has been reasonably prescriptive. If you followed certain processes, learned certain things, you would get the hoped for outcome. In life after university, the road is less prescriptive and there's no one roadmap that suits everyone. In my line of work, the accepted roadmap to success is that one should complete a finance degree, get a foot in the door in a financial services company, and try to land a role as an investment analyst. 
Once you're an analyst, you'll have the opportunity to, to analyze and, and value companies and decide which ones are going to be more valuable in time. And if you get enough of them right, then you'll become a great investor and the world will be your oyster. But if success as an investor was simply about applying the valuation techniques learnt at university, the world would be chock full of great investors who consistently knew how to make money hand over fist. But there are surprisingly few great investors who can consistently pick winners. Now I'm not saying I'm a great investor, but I do have a 20 year track record that nobody can take away from me that shows that I do have some skill in picking winners. However, I attribute my success as an investor not to the theories and my ability to complete valuation models, but rather to the gut feeling, instinct, ability to talk to chief executives and find out what really makes their companies tick, and my patience in holding on to good companies and waiting for them to achieve what I believe they're capable of achieving. It is these personal characteristics that have differentiated me as an investor and led to my career success. I have a team of 15 investment professionals working with me, and they all have different approaches to investing, but they are each successful in their own right. They know what makes them different and what works for them, and that's why they stood out and we picked them over the many other applicants who approached us for roles, but looked very similar to every other applicant. As a business, we've differentiated, differentiated ourselves by being clear communicators, using plain English to explain what are sometimes difficult and confusing investment concepts to our clients. We're not a large, faceless entity. Our investors know, who, know exactly who is managing their money and how we're doing it. If we make a mistake, we own up to it. And similarly, if we get it right, we own that too. Now these might seem very small differentiators, but they are important and they define us as a business and as individuals. From here, you're entering a new phase of life. It's not prescribed and it will be different for each of you. It's exciting and you should approach it as such and you should give it your all. Because while I know that each of you is a high achiever, you've achieved this milestone after all, for every one of you, there will be 50 or 100 others who are striving for the same thing as you, and at this stage, they all look somewhat similar to you. So find your difference, your unique competitive advantage, and play it. Use it to stand out and make your mark. It's great fun, it is well worth it, and I wish you every success for whatever lies ahead. Thank you and congratulations again.